respected sir we are fortunate to present you with this token of gratitude during the second international conference on computing for the lab and business analytics hosted by iim tbh we extend our heartfelt congratulations to you for your outstanding contribution and achievement in the field of your empowerment and social development your dedication as the mentor and co-founder of the center for youth and social development has been truly inspiring and your commitment for advancing the rights to information agenda in odisha is commendable we applaud your significant roles including serving as the state information commissioner of odisha and being a member of the state planning board where you advocated for people centric decentralized plan your current role as a member of the outstanding committee at niti ayokya partner underscore your commitment to institutional partnership between civil society and the government your contribution as the convener of odisha development initiative facilitating the organization of the odisha development conference has been instrumental in encouraging a multi stakeholder platform for meaningful dialogue and collaboration your leadership positions in national network as a volunteer action network india vani credibility alliance certainly reflect your dedication to promoting accountability transparency and legitimacy within civil society organizations your publication particularly civil society legitimacy and accountability have made significant contribution to the disclosure and organizational behavior and accountability framework for ngos we congratulate you once again on your remarkable journey and achievement and we look forward to your continued leadership and contribution to the development sector we wish you continued prosperity and fulfillment in all your future endeavors may i now request sri chatanand to deliver his keynote address and illuminate us sir please good morning everyone this you know especially brother the francisco and others who are outside the physical uh, realm of many of us right now but you are all in the virtual uh, Uh, your your virtual presence itself is a great source of encouragement in this international conference on computational finance and business analytics professor patnaik srikant patnaik the jagmohan ji pramod ji and all of you the gentlemen you know, it's a privilege and a great opportunity for me to share some of my thoughts before you to think through how the problems of ordinary people and the knowledge world outside the village can be enriched i would also like to draw your attention and i am really grateful to professor patnaik for inviting me here because this is a knowledge hub of the state and you know in a very short while i could see the range of publications which has come out of professor patnaik and the contribution in such a wide range of knowledge domain it's it's a real knowledge hub of, of our state and i'm sure if not today tomorrow recognition appreciation and critical contribution to the knowledge domain in odisha and the you know business world the the inter science world outside odisha will suddenly remember professor patnaik for this great contributions not just in our 
I wrote two books and I had spent a lot of time. Right? One book, when I did on civil society legitimacy and accountability, <laughs> I went to, I had to go on a sabbatical act. And in that sabbatical, I, of course, I traveled around the world to see the issue of accountability, the issue of legitimacy for in the African region, the Pacific region, the you know the European region, the Scandinavian region within Europe, and then of course North America, and you know and, and especially the the other side also, but. Producing 100 books in such a short time is an amazing task, actually. And so, therefore, And this village is called Sorisamara village. And in this village, when I landed, I went to a small trade center, small children's center, which is between seven months to three years. That is the age of the toddlers. And there was somebody, Rumi, who was the caretaker of that children's center and a small balwadi, small bridge. I could see three children, you know, three children, at least three to four, right, who were almost heavily undernourished. They're severely malnourished. And malnutrition, unless you see them, you can believe what mal nutrition can bring to a child and to an adult population. And during that visit, when I had the opportunity to talk to the mothers, the teachers there, you know, the Bhagavadi teacher, and others who were present, I realized, and I would like you to also join me in realizing that, if we are not able to take care of a child, in the first thousand days, the child becomes absolutely, you know, Zodia, which we call Leji, or Swa, right? Leji, the mind and the cognitive level has not developed, so he will be, behave like a, you know, Bukka, right? and then he would also behave like, you know, he will be come so that means he would not like to, he will be afraid of hard work for his entire life. For his entire life. Nothing can be done during the lifetime if the child is undernourished, malnourished in the first thousand days. And this Valwadi center, which was taking care of that in the first thousand days, they said, sir, next time when you come, you'll see these three or four children who are severely malnourished, they would, they would have come back. Because we have diagnosed their problem at the right time, and we are taking measures at the right time, so that 
you know, their problem is going to be dealt head on. And in the government system, we have the nutrition rehabilitation centers at the district headquarters, which we call NRCs. All such severe malnourished children, they're supposed to be sent there and they stay there. And in that, they are supposed to be treated and given supplementary nutrition. You know, they are given complementary nutrition both to the child and the mother so that the child has a greater chance of recovering faster. And they recover. Provided you have identified it in the first go and you have taken sufficient measures to deal with that. I came back with a lot of satisfaction from that village because this positive state which is being taken in this center to identify malnutrition issues in a tribal hamlet, dealing with malnutrition and taking positive steps to overcome the situation was a great step by itself. So I complimented them and then came back very happily that the child has not gone astray. So today in Odisha, in the rural hinterland, there will be a bulk of people who are afraid to do hard work. So there is nothing, no fault of theirs because their childhood had been the childhood of undernourishment, childhood of malnourishment. So therefore, when we relate with them, start accusing them, it's not because of their fault. They have been a victim of this. I'll take questions at some point of time so that you have an opportunity to raise your questions and I'll be delighted to respond to you some of your queries. The second village I went why I'm sharing my life experience of the week before last only, not very far, right? Very recent. Because I can't forget them. And I thought they're very relevant what we are transacting today. The second village we went was a village in the lower Banda Hills, right? Lower Banda Hills. It was Dadabuda Ram Panchayat, Kairput block, Malgram village district. When we landed in that village, I had a meeting with all women folks in the village. They all came so happily to interact with me. And each one was in a smiling uh, uh, pose. And also very happy. You can see the happy faces. What they are doing in this village? This village, they realized very early that the agriculture, that livelihood source is a risky source. They get into monoculture, and if there is crop failure every, every year, their total livelihood source is gone, right? They don't have any income that way. So, particularly in this village, what they have done, they have embraced integrated farming as their own livelihood strategy. And in integrated farming, they have some village, some other crops, they have vegetables also, they have horticulture, they have backyard poultry, they have goatry, they have, you know, a small little ways in which they also do petty business. So they have distributed the whole risk into a number of areas. And if there is one area where they are not able to get anything, the other areas will compensate them. So, and so, so this integrated farming model, which they are practicing, of course, you know, from CYST, we do provide them some back-end support, some handholding support, some technical support, and that is very important, critical, but people are at the forefront. And I was very impressed. So what support is needed there? The support which is needed there, and I asked them, and I verified, I realized the ones who are doing backyard poultry, 
that poultry is always affected because of lack of vaccination in time. If vaccination is done in time, the birds are going to survive. And one, they are not going to lose the birds. So, facilitating vaccination for the goats, for the, you know, backyard poultry are so critical and that is being done in time. So, the risk is minimized. And they are a very happy place and they are trying to cope up with their own livelihood needs and demands. The third village which I went, that was in Korapur district by Paribu. It's a small village, very interesting. And then there, there is a tribal uh, girl who has been projected as the G20 tribal uh, girl from Odisha. Rai Mati is her name. And she has been traveling from countries to countries. And then she took me to the farmyard in which about 20 to 25 families are doing a small cluster of watermelon. Watermelon cluster, right? So I said, what is the greatness about your, this cluster? He said, sir, earlier we used to do it in small patches in backyards. But this first time, we have a cluster approach in which many farmers, both Every, everyone who has a piece of land, even people who do not have land also, they have come together. And we, have, we are exploiting the water resources nearby and we have developed a watermelon cluster. And to whom, to our village, traders from far off places also come because they know that there is a guaranteed supply of watermelon from this cluster. And then what we do, we aggregate our product and negotiate with the market so that we are not exploited from the market. And that is what they are doing there. Great work. I spent some time, found out what are their challenges they are facing. And the challenges is, you know, they are not able to forecast the business for the next two years. Sir. How their business is going to look like, how they would like to diversify just from producing watermelon to watermelon processing, storage of watermelon you know, value addition around watermelon. That is some area where they require some help, some support, some ideas, some, you know, back-end, what you call help. Then finally, that day, when I ended that day, I went to a village. And this village is Chathisgarh, Odisha border village. By the time I landed there, there were about 1,000 women actually from a tribe called Durwa tribe. They are all gathered to welcome me to receive me. I had no idea that so many, you know, people will be waiting for me. But by the time I reached there, I could see the gravity of the gathering there. Why they have come together? They have come together to interact with me, to get a message from me about their, the identity of their tribe. This particular tribe was, was not part of the scheduled tribe list. So they were struggling all these years, all these years, to get an identity, proper identity of their tribe. And they are a genuine scheduled tribe. But they don't appear in our scheduled tribe list as per the schedule of the constitution. And after the constitution is done, all such additions require constitutional amendments. That's a huge affair, actually. And parliament has to do a constitutional amendment to add a tribe, actually, to the list that is the scheduled. So they have been trying. I know that they were trying whenever they come to Bhuvaneswar. So we used to provide them little support for staying, helping them with meetings with various, you know, statutory authorities, helping them with little research. So that was done. But this time, when I was going, they knew that they have got something, but they were not very sure whether they have got that. I had carried the gadget notification of Government of India. That was the only document which was available to me. And I could access through the web portal and got a copy printed. And I was carrying that copy. And when I landed there and announced that your tribe has been recognized by the parliament, there is a gadget notification at the national level. Government of India has published this gadget notification about your tribe, along with several other tribes. Right? So there was a big club, 
And many of them, they were in tears actually. Tears was rolling in their eyes because they could not believe that their identity is so cleanly recognized. They said, sir, from tomorrow, can we get our caste certificate? Can our boys and girls get admission as tribal students in educational institutions? Can, I, can we get other entitlements like scholarships and things like that? I said, yes, but state has not done the notification. I, I will send you the state notification along with the gazette notification and the state notification. You can go to the revenue authorities to demand your caste certificate. I came back, ensured that the state notification is done and send a copy. They said, no. We would like to come to Bhubaneswar to receive that copy from you. If they came here, went back. So that was the last village which I did in that trip. The next day, because these live cases, I'm hoping that you are able to connect actually. You know, they are not abstracts. They are not theory actually. They are live cases and I would like to pull the thread towards end that. Second day, and I closed that. Of course, I did five, four days stay. I'm not going to share all the four days, days story, but this two days story is enough to give us a context how to build this community knowledge and insights into the various domains of knowledge science or inter science. Second day, morning, we went to a village in Dasmanpur block. A. Malkangiri is the name of the Panchamit. And lovely village, you know, by the time I landed there, they were doing, uh, they, they really escorted me with a dance, dance, right? So they were all very happy dancing. And I was so annoyed that the mic, the, the mic system, the sound system was so huge that you can't even talk to anybody. <laughs> they said, these are the boys are. You know, we are not paying them a rupee actually. They know that you are coming today and they are all very happy that they want to celebrate. So they have all come. They are freely available to us. We are not paying anything, including the mic system, including the rickshaw. They have done it themselves. So, and then we went through the village, looked at the village economy there. And in the economy, we found there is a new vegetable cluster they have started farming because they are able to access to water. They didn't have access to water. So the moment they got access to water, there is a huge vegetable cluster. So we sat under a tree, very lovely, you know, tamarind tree. And in the shadow of the tamarind tree, when we were discussing, my first question to the villagers were, is there a landless family in this village? Four hands came up. We are the landless. We don't have a land. What do we do? How do you make a living here? Then another four or five hands came up. He said, sir, he's doing cultivation in my land. I have given my land, my extra land to them. In and the landed ones, they are together able to get into a livelihood practice which is going to give them an earning, give them a source of life. I was very happy that my final village, of course there were three, four villages that day, but let me complete and conclude with the final village. Final village when I landed, 
this whole village is like a you know apartment there is no street there is no village road actually i said you know if, if your houses and habitations are also dispersed so cluster approach without a clean road in the village how do you live they said sir you know the bulk of this road the, the land of this village belongs to only two three families they have given they have shown us a place place where we have constructed our house so that would you would find a cluster based housing structure than a street based housing structure so that means the land owners the landed walas have given land to those who did purchase the land who do not have a record in their hand but they are staying there and they are cultivating what will as a new source of livelihood opportunity training them around mushroom helping them around mushroom value addition helping them to market mushroom in a good price things like that we went to a mushroom growers place finally we saw the mushrooms that day has gone and out of curiosity i asked them where has it gone he said no sir today in our village there is a girl which is getting married so they have bought 20 kilos of mushroom and today we had a mushroom feast actually in the village everybody had it but to my surprise i realized it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon no that finished their lunch but everybody was carrying a little putli a little uh, baggage with themselves and they were coming out of the homes i should where are you all getting ready to go you know they said we are going with the girls the girl who is going to be married to the boys village so the procession we will all go in the procession we will spend a night in the boys village next day whole day they will treat us the whole village will be treated and then third day after lunch we will come back who is going to stay in your village to guard against your properties and all that he said we have identified six persons old people who will stay in the village and guard the complete village resources properties and we are all going then my curiosity was you know how is this boy's family going to manage such a huge village and give them food at least four meals four meals and a breakfast he said no sir we are all carrying something with us then out of curiosity when i took one of the baggage you know he was carrying only and certainly which he has grown in his backyard another bag i could see he is carrying some mushrooms another bag i could see he is he is carrying some millets you know the sad living sad economy you know can you think of this in our society In today's society, in which you and me we live, that I think friends, from dealing with malnutrition, which is a big problem still in the tribal areas, looking at helping a landless farmer, right, grow something and also enjoy a happy living in the same vicinity, in the same habitation. to cluster for farming and to creating an identity for themselves i think there is a lot of things happening at the community end community end in the backward regions community end in the tribal hinterland and they go on notice we are not connected there we are completely disconnected we are all in the what you call and wagon of rising india right rising india rising odisha right that attracts us so much so we only get put to the rising side of the society the other side of the society is a very interesting and a complex society and so many interesting things happening at and towards end of the day when i was coming out getting into my train from koraput to bhubneswar first of all suddenly i realized that as if a 360 drama was going on for last 3 days 
and suddenly the drama has stopped and I'm in the train moving to Bhubaneswar, right? And that live drama, that live drama which ran for three days, week before last, I do that every second month, at least I go around, see people, meet people, identify problems, deal with their problems, talk to Sarkari officers, talk to policy makers, bring some changes in the policy, etc. But these peculiar issues, I think, you know, giving attention to those issues, understanding the priorities of ordinary people, identifying the problems, which are the existing problems, the joys and the sorrows, the pains and the frustrations, the dreams and the aspirations of ordinary people. I think that is something which is a which is the societal science which has to be embraced by the inter-science movement created by the II MT Bhubaneswar here. Right? Inter-science is not about just pure science. Inter-science is also understanding the societal issues, societal dynamics, societal problems, societal challenges and societal ways of creating happiness in the society. So my request to all of you who are here today, during the next few days, you will connect the pure science to the societal science. Try to understand how do we really get connected to these science. And today, the new education policy has created that option. They say the college must be connected to the village. The university must be connected to the community. Academic world must also learn from the community, right? And in the research, the subjects of research should be co-researchers in the research. That then it becomes a community-based research. And since these new areas are opening up now, I'm sure some of you will find exciting opportunities to get into a deeper drive, into societal drama, to understand, identify some of them, and get connected actually. That is the first you know, appeal from my side. And so I compliment you, I congratulate you for coming together, and you are in a great place. Those of you who have come outside the inter IIA MT, let me tell you, this is a great institution. It's a real knowledge of, real knowledge of, right? There is very little superficiality around the institute. The institute is full of reality science sector, reality products. So you will quite, you know, get into a real life drama while you are here and also connect with many interesting things in facets which are also emerging around the world. And finally, now, today is the SDG era, right? If Agenda 2030 is an agenda which has been set up by the global community to look at the society, the nation, and the community at large, and there is a goal which has been set up. The goalpost is very clear. The 70, I'm not talking about the mere 17 goals only. Beyond the 17 goals which have been set up, around how we want to deal with our people, how we want to see, ensure that how our people should be by 2030, how the planet should be looking by 2030, and how prosperity should be handled by 2030. And to do that, what is the kind of peace and institutional justice we should set up, and what is the kind of partnership we need to put up, right? So people, planet, prosperity, peace, justice, and partnership partnership between academic community and the community at large, the government and civil society, government, academic community, developed countries and developing countries. You know, there is a huge call for partnership at this time. Because this is a many hands problem and many hands problem can be dealt through a multi-stakeholder platform. So the second call is, how do you really help setting up multi-stakeholder platforms? Right? Going beyond our own community, bringing others into our community and then getting into research journey 
and other journeys together. And finally, we are in Odisha, right? Odisha is going through a major change at this point of time, right? I'm not going to share with you the parikramas and all that. That is not the change which is exciting for me. The change which is which which excites me is our demographic pattern is changing and changing very fast. Demographic pattern is changing and changing very fast. Right? Our total fertility rate of Odisha and total fertility rate of the country and Odisha, Odisha is lower and we are getting more deeper and deeper like South Korea, like Japan, like many other countries which are now going through a huge demographic transition. The children population in Odisha is going to be almost 25 to 30 percent less in next 10 years time, 10 to 12 years time. There will be schools for children will be scanty actually. That is the point. Youth, this is a youth time. But the youthful time is going to disappear in next 10 years' time. The aging population is going to rise up. I would like you to recognize this demographic transition which is happening. I think there is very little discussion which is happening around the society, within the government, within the systems, about the demographic transition. And if this continues, so that means every child's life is precious. Every mother's life is precious. We can't afford to lose a child at this point of time. So how do you really deal with zero tolerance to infant mortality? Zero tolerance to maternal mortality? These are all challenges which has to be dealt with. And the second and final challenge which you are seeing here is Odisha is three times per capita contributor to the carbon emissions than the national average, than the national average. So today, our carbon emissions has made, there, may, there are many factors. But today, yesterday, Bhubaneswar was the sixth warmest city in Asia. Right? And there are many reasons, many causes. But this cannot be denied or underscored as one of the critical causes. Three times more than the national average, three times more. And between now and next 10 years, the carbon emission projects, where do you get carbons? From fossil fuel-based power generation. That is the highest producer of carbon. Gadi Woody, air conditioner, they are minimal actually, but that is maximum. And of course, by putting a lot of pressure on the soil, by utilizing excessive fertilizers, excessive pesticide, pesticides, so soil also emits carbon. So I think this requires some attention right now. Why I'm saying next 10 years? Next 10 years, the new coal blocks which have been given in Odisha, they will all start exploiting the coal stuff. All will start exploiting. Next 10, 12 years, the coal-based employment is going to rise three times, or at least two times, 2.5 times, definitely. And then suddenly, the country has signed a protocol, and as part of the protocol, as part of our COPS 26, right? we are supposed to reduce two degree of warm, global warming, our warm, you know, warming by 2070, right? And there has to be a zero net that time. So by 2047, 2050, there is a target 2050 to 2070, and by 2070, it has to be zero. Then only we can save our planet. Then we can save our soil. So that calls for serious thinking, critical thinking among scientists, among the academic community, among the community leaders, among civil society, among corporate giants, actually. I wish some of these points 
will receive your attention some of these points which are going to definitely be further dealt both in computational finance and business analytics right the society is going to benefit out of all the best very good wishes for a very successful event and i am delighted again that i could manage to come to the institute and see this temple of learning temple of knowledge myself in my own eyes and uh, meet some of you and i'm sure if we work together we can save the planet we can save the people from distress and then no one should be left behind so my malkangiri boys my malkangiri you know the adivasi girls the landless laborer in dasbanpur you know if they are not identified if they are not recognized as a you know as a problematic spot will never be able to achieve this slogan that no one should be left behind by 2030 thank you so much